All right, we're headed out. Do a little exploring today. A little kick around day. Nothing too exciting, yeah. I don't think, but. Kicking it. I hate to say this out loud, but. Yeah. Uh, you were right. What was I right about? <laughs> I want to hear you say it. People liked when we just grabbed the camera and just went on a kick around day and really didn't do anything yeah. too exciting. So that's what we're going to do again. Yeah. I and mean, we were going to do this anyway. Probably not something that we would have filmed. But yeah. since you got people on board yeah. and they commented and they're on Team Leslie with recording <laughs> our, our kick around days that don't really seem terribly exciting to us, yeah. but... Um, I mean, yeah, you're always hesitant. You're like, ah, that's not really YouTube exciting. So yeah. you don't want to do it. But but we're going to do it again today. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it was my suggestion again. Yeah. So, so but we're going to go back <laughs> over to the Cleveland area. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of things over there we want to check out and see. Yeah, I'm intrigued to see this. And I don't know if they'll be exciting or not. But yeah, I don't know. But buckle I'm up, Buttercup. Okay. Because you're coming with us. <laughs> When we're at lunch at a place called Burger I Am, because yes. supposedly they have great burgers. Yes. So we're going to try burgers. Leslie's going to be very adventurous. She's going to get a burger with ketchup and pickle only, like she does everywhere else. You can get a, pickle, you get a hamburger like that at McDonald's, but uh -huh. she wants to pay $15 for it. <laughs> it was like $8.99. But the reason that we are here specifically yeah. is because they have something unique on their menu. Yes. They have spiked milkshakes. Spiked milkshakes. Yes. And we got one. We did get one. What did we get? We went with the chocolate Godiva spike shake, which is chocolate shake with Godiva chocolate liqueur. Mm. It was a toss up between that and the spiked root beer float. Yeah. So that would go good with a burger too, but we're suckers for Godiva. So. All right, Godiva give it a taste. That's awesome. Mm. We're good. Mm. Well, surprise, surprise, we're at a cemetery, and this is the monument for President James Garfield. I think you can go inside this yes. monument. President Garfield is in there. Yeah. The only president interned above ground. Yes. Very didn't know interesting. That. Yeah, I didn't know a whole lot about uh, President Garfield, but I do know that he is one of four presidents that was assassinated while the pres while they were president. Well, and assassinated is is, is controversial. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about that here in a second. <laughs> but first of all, do you know which four presidents were assassinated while they were actually sitting in the seat? Well, you're, talk you're claiming him. If he's listed as one, I guess he they are listed. technically he saying he was assassinated. One. But there's a great line there. Okay, so Garfield's one, obviously. Uh, Lincoln. Lincoln. Um, I'm terrible with presidents. Kennedy. Grover Cleveland or something? No, it was actually McKinley. <laughs> oh, McKinley. Yeah, McKinley okay. was shot also. Yeah, not well known. All four presidents who were assassinated were assassinated by gunshot wounds. Let's go in here. And look around, and then we're going to discuss your conspiracy yes, theory. Because when I decided I wanted us to come to this cemetery and found out how, one, it's gorgeous. It is. One of the most gorgeous cemeteries I've been in. Never seen so many huge monuments for just regular people. Just yeah. have these glorious monuments. Or just huge headstones. So, look at this. It's massive. It's like a, a Bible. Look, look in relation to how big Leslie is. How big this headstone is and this is this is millionaires I think this is millionaires, millionaires row I'm not sure I think where lots of very hey, look how thick come come yeah, look over here go stand next to this headstone I'm gonna have Leslie stand next to this headstone look how thick this thing is this is insane look it looks normal from there yeah. but you stand next to it and then look how thick this thing is, and how big this thing is. It's crazy. It's probably four feet. I like your technique of measuring, though. <laughs> well, I'm 5'2", so... <laughs> All right, let's go inside, and then we'll talk conspiracy. Okay. Yeah, this is crazy. Burial site for a president. 
Because he was only president for a few months. Yeah. There's even a mural up here, right there, oh. of them like taking him at in. At his bedside. Yeah, at his bedside where he where, where he died. Yeah. So that's crazy. He's viewing the lake. But it's beautiful. It is phenomenal. The gargoyles gorgeous. up there. Oh, the architecture is beautiful. Well, now we're out front. That's the entrance right there. This thing just opened up. It's been yes. closed for a while because they have they're doing renovations, and so we were on that side looking up at the the mural of the uh, the death, the deathbed scene. But this is like a story that plays of out life. of his life, because you can see like I don't know some kind of a uh, document being transferred. I guess the middle one is an inauguration, and then being sworn in maybe. He's a war general. Uh, so yeah, it's very cool. This is impressive, man. Holy crap. Look at that. Look at that. And there's Garfield. And his chair. All this stained glass in here. It's just amazing. The architecture. This had to cost a fortune to build this thing. This is more elaborate than some churches. And this is just his crypt, pretty much. Oh, narrow spiral staircases. Look, I mean, look. Our Leslie's nemesis. Very I'm wearing a six and a half, and look. And your foot barely fits in the step. And you got to go to the outside of the step to get it to fit. Sideways for more stability. Okay. Now we're up top, and you can look down into the space that we were just in, where the monument the statue of Garfield is, and then. There's just a balcony that goes all the way around here. And you can see up in the top there. The little angels tell you the directions north, south, east, and west. But the, uh, that's like mosaic with like gold and different colors, mosaic tiles. And even the uh, pictures around this edge right here, it's all mosaic tiles. And you got all the stained glass around there. It's just, the craftsmanship is just beautiful. And this stuff here is marble. And, uh, man, that's super impressive, isn't it? They went all out. They yeah. All out oh, we go further up? Yes. Okay. There's actually a balcony to the outside. Oh, wow, okay. Whoa. <laughs> man. That is so gorgeous. A great view of downtown Cleveland over there. All right, it's time to go downstairs to the crypts and the washroom. Oh, that's just... That's him and his wife. Tim and his wife? Yes. Handsome woman? Stop it. Huh? She's pretty. <laughs> Gotta be quiet in here. I won't be able to vlog. We're gonna go in here. This is amazing. The flag is still draped over his coffin. And his wife is just in a coffin right next to him. They're they're not even covered in like a crypt. Their coffins are just actually Sit still just sitting there on pedestals. This is crazy. All right, so as I'm standing here, I'm thinking how crazy is it to be this old that you could literally go in there. I mean, you can't obviously, but you could go in there and just lift the lid and see the 20th president. Could. Looks like now. That's I wonder insane. what he looks like. I mean, that's insane. Yeah, that's crazy. Somebody's got a key to it. Somebody. And when they did the restoration and everything, and they had to work around yeah. all this, it's just insane to think. All you do is hit the lid, baby. I wonder if anybody has. You know, people think about it. People think that's probably morbid to think about. It. I don't want to see. We're curious creatures by nature. So, yeah, who, who wouldn't be intrigued to just, I mean... Let's take a little peek. It's history. He's the only one above ground. The only one that's ever possible to do that to. Yeah. It makes it even more intriguing to want to do it. Yeah. Right now, I need to find out who's in those urns. Yeah, I don't know. Like, Maybe his kids or other loved ones or somebody. Or sibling something. There's no plaque, so i got to go... Find a curator. Okay. Leslie's still inside talking to the curator. The urn is um, President Garfield's daughter and her husband. 
I wanted to be buried down there with the family. But it, I, what I found interesting is the uh, the guy who killed President Garfield was uh, I don't know. They said he was a little crazy, but um, he wrote a speech, and in his mind, he thought that his speech was what got President Garfield elected, and so he was seeking out a spot in the cabinet staff. Uh, specifically like an ambassador to France or Austria I don't remember which one but uh, Garfield wasn't having it so he hung around the area a lot just trying to get in with the president and their staff um, to get a spot on the cabinet he never did and so um, he got all pissed and shot President Garfield twice and uh, President Garfield didn't die right away in fact his injuries today wouldn't have been that serious he would have survived it easily uh, but medicine wasn't as advanced back then, so that's why he died. In fact, uh, when President Reagan was shot in 81, his injuries were way worse than President Garfield's, and he survived just because medicine had advanced enough back then. I mean, he had broken rib, punctured lung, all kinds of stuff. Um, Garfield just took a couple gut shots. Uh, well, what, the first bullet, I think, went off his arm, and the second one went in the gut, and uh, so he died um, several I think it's a couple of weeks later, actually, and uh, so that is where that is where the conspiracy comes in. The guy who killed President Garfield, I'll throw a picture up. Like I said, he he was a little he was a little loopy, a little crazy. Yeah, clinically psychotic. But at least in the Wikipedia, they talk about him being diagnosed. But psychotic. when he was tried, he was tried, and it was determined that he was of sound mind and body, yeah. and so he did stand trial mm -hmm. and he was convicted of first degree murder of the president and he was hanged yes but leslie is on team assassin i'm not on team assassin <laughs> stop saying she thinks that. he's not guilty no i'm saying it's 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 a it's a gray area so his defense what was his defense because if he was tried in today's times i think outcome may still be the same yeah but it would have been a way more interesting trial because technically he was shot in july right didn't die for two months okay they were and according to autopsies they were not fatal wounds the shots were not fatal no it was an infection that killed him it was because they weren't as sterile back then and right they said that they had many people working on him with just their hands. Yeah. So it was unsterile conditions, unsterile hands all the time in him trying to find the bullets. Mm -hmm. And that's what caused all the infections that killed him. So you kind of wonder, at his trial, he was pleading that he didn't kill him. The, the doctors and the medical people killed him yeah. with the unsterile conditions that he was in. And you kind of, it makes you go, well, I mean, you got a point. They weren't fatal shots. He didn't die instantly. Yeah. Ultimately, yes. He killed. But, you and, and prosecutors would say his intent was to kill him, but you don't know. It could have just been to hurt him. You don't know. We'll so never what I, know. What I think is he had the intent to kill premeditation and so he shot him and eventually he ended up dying of the infection but he would never got the infection if he wouldn't have been shot so which, which justice I, I, was served in my mind i totally get that too when you roll it all back like that yes but to try to be somewhat fair i could see i could see where maybe it didn't deserve hanging yeah well there's rockefeller and his headstone looks like the Washington Monument. It does. Holy crap, it is so tall. And John Rockefeller was one of the richest people of all time in any point in history ever. Even in today's standards, he would be considered very, very wealthy. Probably still one of the wealthiest people. Yeah. Oil tycoon, but it just goes to show you. Spoiler alert. We all end up like this. No matter how much money you make. All good things come to an end. So, enjoy life. No matter how much money you got. This is the grave of Alan Freed, who was a, a DJ, and coined the phrase rock and roll. He came up with it. And then down here, people who have visited, you can see the, the bands from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where people visited the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
and came and left their bands here at his grave for him, which is really cool. And the other side is a really cool headstone. It's a jukebox. He was a good looking guy. Oh yeah? Yeah. I don't know how to judge if dudes are good looking or not, but. He was a good looking guy. He's got an infectious smile. Yeah? Yeah. Well, he was a personality. There's the grave of Elliot Ness, who was prohibition agent known for helping take down Al Capone. And uh, if you've ever seen The Untouchables, the show, um, great portrayal of Elliot Ness. Uh, go take a look at that if you haven't seen that already. But just, and it's right off the road. I mean, you just pull right off to the side here and he's, he's right off the side of the road. And he died in uh, 1957. Well, here's the grave of Ray Chapman. And Ray Chapman, the significance of him, he's a Cleveland Indians player in the 19-teens. Um, died in 1920. He is the only American Major League Baseball player to have been killed in a game. From a game. He was hit by a pitch in the head. Yeah. He didn't actually die on the field. He died a couple days later. But you can see that some of the mementos, some of the baseballs, the gloves, the hats that people have left for him. And it really, uh, his story kind of changed the game of, of baseball. So if you've ever seen the rule in baseball where if a pitcher throws a ball and it hits the dirt, they change out the, they change out the baseball. Ray Chapman, his death is the reason that they do that now. And the reason that they do it is because that, that dirt or scuffs can cause the ball to behave erratically and move around. Uh, it can soften the ball uh, discolor. and discolor the ball. And when the ball becomes discolored, it's harder to see coming at you. So they want that bright white baseball so that you can see it coming at you. But look at the difference. But if you see this coming at you at 100 miles an hour and that coming at you at 100 miles an hour, there is a difference. There is, yeah. When it's traveling that fast, it's going to be harder to see. So that bright white, you can definitely see a lot, lot better. Yeah. So that changed the game. You would think that it would change the game to where you would have to wear a helmet. You would think that this would have sparked that rule, but that rule didn't come into place until almost 30 years after Chapman was killed. That's crazy. Yeah. Hey, stick around for a few seconds. We're going to honor a fallen hero. If you want to get involved with helping us help veterans, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.